Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Battletech. So I made some uh, I made some moves here you can see in the uh, queue. Uh, I bought a bunch of the fancy stuff from the store. I am installing the fancy stuff in our mechs. Um, I did not purchase the... Here we go, here's the tab. I did not purchase the plus three melee hit gyro. It's only a one melee hit better than the gyro we're currently running in the Hatchet Man. And it really is a lot of money. My concern was that we are going to, uh, we're going to be traveling for more than 12 days here. Uh, and we have, we have 23 days left on this upgrade, so I, we won't need to run any new repairs, but I just didn't, I didn't want to spend almost $700,000 and then uh, 750000 and end up getting to our next location with so little in the bank, because, you know, who knows what's going to happen, who knows what we might want to buy. My suspicion is, if we want to buy something at our new destination, it's going to be something that's better for us than plus one melee hit. And while it could be useful to have a second gyro, um, in case we want to build a second punch mech, or uh, in case something bad happens to our current gyro, I, I don't think that that level of security is worth the 650,000 sea bills it would cost to get it. So, I have also picked our new target. I think we're headed to Mechter. Uh, now here's something that I was told recent, or that I uh, read on the internet. Uh, apparently, the scoring objective for visiting systems uh, counts systems that you just fly through in addition to systems that you actually stop on to do stuff. And the fact that this is 7,500 uh, points right now suggests to me that that might be correct because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... We have only actually stopped and done stuff on 10 systems, according to my list here. So, I think we can we can check this now. Uh, if this goes up by more than 500 points on our trip to Mechter, then we know that that is true, and that has some interesting implications. That makes it way more possible for us to get every star system. Not that, I, not that we will, necessarily, but at least makes it possible. So, if we see that number rise by 1,500, we will know that that is the case. Um... I think we might well be ready for a Three Skull world. This place has a black market, and it's a mining and manufacturing planet. It's rich. It has some has some good modifiers here for our likelihood to find cool stuff in the store. I also noticed that there's a flashpoint over here that I had not realized was here. It's only three and a half skulls, so it's not that far out of our reach. It does expire in 63 days, so if we want to do it, we have to get headed in that direction. And it has us working for the Lyran Commonwealth, which is one of the few factions that actually like uh, actually likes us, right? Aren't we positive with them? We are. We are slightly positive with them. So we want to keep relations high with the pirates, um, but I don't want to ally with the pirates because I'm pretty sure that allying with somebody puts you at permanent or puts you not permanent, but as long as you are allied with them, puts you at war with all of their enemies, and I believe everybody is. Uh, an enemy of the pirates so if we're seeking to get an alliance we should get it with somebody else now getting an alliance with somebody else I guess would put us at war with the pirates as well maybe we're not going to do an alliance I don't know but we should be friendly with more people than just the pirates and working for the Lyrans may uh, may be a good way to do that so yeah that's our plan let's uh, let's get a move on we do not have no we do not have 23 days 27 days worth of work to do, unfortunately, so we're going to be sitting idle for some time here. But I'm hopeful that we'll be able to find some good missions here, hopeful that we'll be able to find some good stuff to buy. Now, to be clear, I don't necessarily think we need to, like, avoid doing missions against the pirates either. Honestly, if our level of pirate rep stays about where it is for the rest of the game, that would be okay. It would not be the end of the world. We do want to make some uh, make some really good friends with somebody, though. I wrapped up that job you asked. Ready to go over financials whenever you are. Okay, all pretty easy. Uh, I think we can afford to go extravagant again. We're very close to pushing up to forty-one. Uh, I saw that another flashpoint was added. Where is that? Oh, right here. Oh, it's just joint venture again. Yeah, they did say that we might uh, we might get another shot at this. Well, I'm not... 
We could turn. How much time is left on our on our current travel? Fifteen days. So we could turn here and go after this. We're a little bit more capable of it than we used to be. But if we go after that flashpoint, it probably makes it very difficult for us to get to this one in 51 days. No, I think we're gonna stick we're gonna stick to the current path. We need to visit new uh, new systems, we need to go in new directions, we need to work for new people. So heading galactic east here. I don't know if this is rimward or spinward or what. Uh, but heading in this direction I think is better for us in the long run. We're going to finish our current Argo upgrade four days before we hit the planet, or the new system. I think we might not start anything until after we hit the system we get some idea of what our financials are going to look like in the future. Because we do not, uh... We do not currently have any idea how much work we're going to be able to get on Mechter. Also, it might be it might be reasonable to make friends with the Arano Restoration. You know, they control this part of space. We'll see what the jobs are. Maybe they would make a good uh, I don't know about ally, but maybe they would make a good friend. If we don't bypass the faulty interlock, we're looking at a 17% drop across the board. Razor is animated, practically shouting, and you try to remember how you got drawn into this argument. Apparently, with her technical background. Razor thinks she's identified a serious flaw in the Argo's secondary power interlock. For her part, Dr. Murad insists the interlock is working correctly. We're lucky it's only 17%. That isn't the interlock. These systems have just missed several, uh, several centuries worth of annual maintenance. Your plan would potentially expose the entire central core to an overlord. An overlord. An overload. <laughs> only if it doesn't work, Razor fires back. Well... I certainly don't want an overlord messing around in my power interlocks. Also, I don't know what a power interlock is. Uh, Dr. Murad is a professional. Razor has a technical background? Is that a thing? Dependable, periphery, criminal, spacer, technician. She's a criminal? I should read our... Yeah, I should read our crew dossiers a little more carefully. Uh... You know what? I'm gonna ask Dr. Murad to test Razor's idea... Uh, she's, she's good at what she does. She'll manage to implement this in a way that doesn't ruin everything. Probably, possibly, maybe. You say, Dr. Murad, can you run a small-scale test to find out what would happen? She frowns at you, then says, I suppose it's worth examining. She turns to Razor to develop a testing plan. A few hours later, the power goes out in the command center. When you find Dr. Murad, she's elbow-deep in a power conduit. I can fix the damage Razor's bright idea caused. We're going to have to replace some parts. I will thank you to keep that mech warrior away from critical systems in the future, Commander. Okay, 20,000 C-bills is a small price to pay for the chance of maybe something good having happened there. I think it was reasonable to give it a try, at least. Razor's in low spirits for 30 days. Um, you know, hey, Razor's not in the active squad, so that doesn't necessarily mean too much. Razor's not, a, not on the A-string. Probably, I'm assuming that low spirits means that um, morale abilities will cost 10 extra, since uh, high spirits seems to be 10 less. That is not a small price, but again, we may not have to run Razor at any point during that debuff, so who knows. It may have no effect at all. We're nearly broke, Commander. Waypoint I hear ya. Alright, let's start by looking at the store. So... They have some quick drop parts, some Wolverine parts. They also have a full finished Wolverine. SRM6, medium, medium, small, large lasers. Honestly, this is not that great of a mech. Certainly not a 7 million Seabell mech. What do we have on the black market? We have uh, some real garbage, a complete commando, and a complete jet. Who is paying 2.7 million for a commando? Who would do that? Uh, there's another, there's a part of an awesome... Okay, what about this stuff? This is what we're really looking for. Crit and stability damage, way more crit chance. 
<clears throat> An AC2 with 4 accuracy. There's a lot of weapons that have crit chance on them out here. And an arm mod for plus 15 melee damage. Now this one actually does have a weight. I don't know that I can find two tons in the hatchet, man. The thing's a little, a little on the light side as it is. But overall, I have to say, not super impressed with this store. Well, that's a bummer. What about the jobs? What have we available here? Not a lot. Okay, hey, look at that. You can you can get a job that's off of the world's difficulty rating by an entire skull. Right? This world is this world is a three, not a three and a half, right? Yeah, okay. So it seems like uh, it definitely seems like jobs within a half skull of the world rating are more common. But you can get off up to a full skull off. We can't do a four skull. That's not that's not realistic. But we can do a couple of threes, and this one pays really well. They're gonna make us fight pirates, but then we could do a job for the pirates against the Canopians. So we'll end up about where we started with the pirates, but we will have gained rep with the Uranos. That works for me. So which one of these do we want to do first? A Canopian defector has given us an extremely interesting and time-sensitive piece of information, and we need a fast response. Before joining our side, this defector worked at a Canopian facility on this planet. She claims she was responsible for extracting data from a device that sounds, from her descriptions, very much like a Star League-era memory core. We don't know what data is on it, but the Magistracy cannot be allowed to keep it. It's going to be defended like you can't even imagine. This one will be tough. And I am noticing that Salvage is at 522. Uh, then here we believe that the local pirate organization has landed an elite lance on Mechter. Its continued presence inside contested territory is unacceptable and threatens to distract our own forces into trying to track it down and engage it. We need you to locate and eliminate this lance. Well, alright. This one pays a ton. These both sound like they're going to be hard. I was kind of hoping that we'd have like a two and a half, a couple of two and a halfs, and a couple of threes. Well, let's uh, let's dig into smash and grab here. It's a lot of salvage. We need money pretty badly. But this is only 75,000 sea bills different. Man, we have to decide. Like, uh, There's probably not going to be five pieces of priority salvage that I actually want, right? So, like, where does this slider actually go? I th in, in, It makes a lot of sense to just min-max this. Like, we're losing very little money for each point of payment we don't take. But I'm concerned that 522 is going to mean that I get a bunch of garbage I don't need. Like, 22 is a lot of pieces of salvage. Now, granted, we can sell some of that. But maybe this would be a good time to take this as, like, rep. Since we are going to lose rep with the pirates afterward. Just, like, not, not max this out at all. No, I don't care about my pirate rep that much. I want to remain liked, but that's about it, really. Oh, interesting. Your, uh, your... Reputation affects your max contract difficulty as well. I did not realize that. I think we're going to take this as 417 with 104,000. And then we'll uh, we'll take that Arano job mostly as money. Yeah, let's try it this way. We are not well liked by the Magistracy of Knopus. Oh yeah, look, every, everybody is an enemy. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is that actually the number of other major factions? No, there are 8 other major factions. Who's not on this list? Also, who the heck is that all the way on the left there? That's not one of these icons. It's like a shield with like a, a goat's head in it or something. Who is that? Uh, if you are a person who's familiar with Battletech and that looks at all familiar to you, please do uh, please do let us know what is up in the comments. So the Draconis Combine is not listed as an enemy. I wonder if the if the deal here is 
that it's only showing the number of enemies that fit in there, but in fact they are enemies with everybody. I don't know. Whatever. Let's uh, let's do the contract. We'll worry about what happens when we max reputation bars, I guess, when we're a little closer to having done that. This mission makes me nervous. I hope that that is coming through. I hope that that is obvious to everyone. Yeah, we're definitely going full A-team. So, the Jägermack has... Yep, all these improved missiles. The Blackjack has a large laser with three pluses. We have some we have some good tech now. I gotta tell you, I'm a little torn about this whole large laser situation on the Blackjack. I kind of miss having double autocannons. Ten more damage on the on the AC twenty. Like that was necessary. Alright, I think we're good. I am definitely worried, especially like bringing a hatchet man into a fight like this. Hatchet man's a little bit on the light side and really likes to get up close to people. And I know we've we've spent some effort armoring it, making sure that it has an above average chance to survive for a mech of its size. But even so, even so, we are talking about a lot of danger. Now, it is worth noting that the mission is retrieve the memory core and escape. We don't necessarily have to fight everything. I usually do. We almost never extract using an extraction zone. But this might be the first mission where we want to try that. Alright, this is the facility our employer has described. If it's not just a fairy tale, the memory core will be in there. Move up so we can see what kind of firepower we're up against. Secure the memory core, and the leopard will extract us not too far away. Okay. Alright, everything is going to be fine. Confirmed. Possibly. It is at least possible that everything's going to be fine. Away. We're going to want to keep everybody together this time, because uh, splitting okay. up is going to make it harder for us to all get to the LZ. I, I don't want anybody like flanking around here, which I would do if I thought we were necessary. If I thought we were definitely going to just fight our way all the way through. To take advantage of, uh, you know, being able to get into whatever arc we need to get Reporting into. Enemy contact. All right, so we're seeing a couple enemy contacts. Some of these uh, markers are very large in size. I am noticing. Affirmative. Position. Clear. Hearing a lot of pings. Why so many pings? Okay, just information getting filled in. Eighty-ton vehicles, a forty-five-ton mech. So 80-ton vehicles are, of course, very scary. I think that's a hatchet, man. It's the, the identification that we got there. I'm going to reserve down a little bit, I think. Again, just try to draw them in on their first turn. Okay, they have a 65-ton mech. They don't have vision of us yet. Never mind. Apparently they do. I didn't think they had vision of us yet. My point there with saying that was so we shouldn't be in any danger which is part of why I'm doing it this way uh, let's see Centurion get all the way up here and get us some vision I can't get close enough to attack the tank my concern is that um, what I really want to do is reserve until after the tanks move but my concern is that with her out in the open like this she might get murdered like, even with four points of evasion, if that's an SRM carrier, right, that could, that could be really dangerous. Maybe we take Reckless up here and sensor lock that thing, just to... just so we know. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm, I'm okay with that. She's not gonna get to fire full blast every round of this combat, no matter how we do it, due to heat. So this can just be a round where we're saving heat. Sensor lock on target. That is a Shrek PPC carrier, a fairly heavily armored tank that mounts three PPCs. That's actually not as bad as the SRM carrier, I don't think. Commander? So I'm a little bit more secure now. 
Obviously, 150 damage to any location on this mech would be real bad, but that's also a pretty unlikely outcome. Can I really not see that thing from, like, any position where I have cover? Ugh. Well, I could jump up here and get knowledge. I would have five evasion charges and also cover plus bulwark to help get me through. And also, I act on three next turn, and I have the ability to fire and then move. So I could, I could get up here, take a shot on that vehicle, then take a shot on that vehicle, and then run. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reserve. I want that tank to move before Centurion does, so that she can jump in, shoot at it, and then next turn, shoot at it and get away before it gets to attack her. So that went actually like completely ideal. Alright, it's another PPC carrier. So we're firing into the more vulnerable side armor, which I like. I don't think there's anything to do here except take the shot. Uh, we should probably, before doing that, actually look at the enemies. They have a hatchet man with a pretty standard loadout. Probably not quite as good as mine on account of all of the pluses. And then they have a pretty standard loadout Jaeger mech as well. So I think we want to take out the PPC carrier first, but we're definitely putting ourselves in a position where, where I could get hit with the hatchet. I don't think it could... It, it might be able to move to me from there. It is, in, it is guarded. This thing's going to be a serious problem for all of us forever, though. I'm going to do this. Engaging target. Ugh, of course the auto cannon hit the front armor. Well, at least we hit the front armor with multiple shots, so it's down to 5 health. We'll probably be able to take the shot and get out of there. Alright, the other tank moved into cover, which is yep. not ideal, but also not like a big problem. Not sure if I want to fire the auto cannon on this or not. I think I do. So it's got it's got cover now. The auto cannon's gonna do I mean, the auto cannon's still gonna do almost a hundred damage. It will not be a one shot to any location. And we only have a sixty percent chance to hit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go for this. Sixty percent's not bad. Okay, that's a really good start. That's a lot of damage we just took off the field. Yes, boss. Alright, you just need to charge up here, and I think we're going to... You know what I'm, I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to precision strike the hatchet man to bring it down to two initiative, so that we know our hatchet man will be able to fire and then back out without potentially receiving the... Uh, the hit here. Also, you know what? 5% chance for headshots. Like, we have a fair number of missiles here. We probably will get a head hit. But maybe I should, uh, instead of being gimmicky, just try to take off the right side, because we know that's where the AC-10 and the hatchet are. Yeah, and it's not really that heavily armored in the right torso. Locked on. I will say that if this is all the stuff we're going to see on this mission, I'm not super pleased with our decision to uh, take so much salvage. It looks like that's not really going to work out for us. Do I want to maybe... I think I want to do a precision strike because I really, really would love to kill this thing. And I'm afraid that uh, I, won't get a, I won't get the kill. Because we're probably we're more likely to hit the side armor. The fact that we double hit the front armor was pretty weird. Alright, we got it. And now we move. We back up. One more for the rubbish bin. So yeah, all these trees plus a little bit of ground motion means that I can, I can probably run back to here and still be safe. I don't want to jump. I just want to move to a place where I'm not going to take a take a hit from the hatchet dead on. I mean, I guess I... You know what? If I jump... If I jump, I'm going to overheat. I cannot jump. 
I'm also thinking now that like I'm worried about the the actual auto cannon itself. That exposes my left arm, which doesn't have anything in it. Well, I mean, it has something in it, but yeah, this is an okay way Order to go. Acknowledged. Give ourselves a little bit of distance, so I'm not meleeable. All right, and then Reckless can get up here and try some stuff. I think we're going to be able to divert attention away from the hatchet man. I do wish that I was firing into his actual left arc instead of the front arc, but let's just hope we get lucky here. All weapons committed. Okay, a little bit lucky. 36 health on the section containing the autocannon. But like, this is not three skulls worth of difficulty, right? Like, if it is just an indication of the total tonnage of the enemies, I mean, I guess those were 80-ton vehicles. Okay, that Jaeger mech has Ace Pilot, too. That's interesting. Yes, Commander. Yeah, this is not... I bet there's more stuff. I know those vehicles were 80-ton, but we also know the game doesn't treat, the vehicle, treat vehicles like full-size mechs anyway. If this is everything, I'm yeah, I'm really bummed out about my uh, <laughs> some of my decisions. Got it. Let's see if we can finish this thing off. It's pretty screwed up. All right, I do believe that is. Yeah, that is almost lethal. Right torso's out. So Critical this thing, commander. this thing just has a single medium laser left. He did ignore my cover. I'll give him that. Orders. There we go. That's... Uh, boy. I'm not much of a shot, though, do I? I'm, I'm just gonna sprint. We're just gonna get closer. Right, let's go. Sometimes the Thunderbolt has to just spend a whole turn running. Okay, what are the odds that we can do some serious damage to this Jaeger mech before it's turn? Standing by. Now that we've pretty much removed the threat of the hatchet man. Well, it would be cool if I didn't have to fire. Can I get close enough for a melee attack? I cannot. The melee button is not lighting up anything. So your weaponry is, like, completely evenly distributed, right? I guess firing into the front arc makes sense then. Okay, that was all right. The question is, can the rest of us also fire into the front arc? Because unfortunately we did damage to his left side there. God, look at the accuracy of all these weapons. All weapons committed. Wow, that was lucky. Quite a lot of uh, focus in that one area there. Yep, that's a uh, that's a real hit. Armor breach, I, internal damage. I'm very surprised it went for the melee attack. That is not something I was expecting to happen. Well, I think one of the things it's doing is just trying to break my line of sight. Oh, it's also getting us into that other arc. That's annoying. It's annoying that that's working. On the move. Let's strip a little bit of evasion off of it so that we can maybe give it the AC-20. Taking the shot. We might actually be able to secure a knockdown here. I mean, I'm opening the Thunderbolt up to a melee attack here, but I'm not afraid of the Hatchet Man's melee attacks anymore. We go for a Precision Strike, knock this thing down to one. I think it's very unlikely that it gets another action. All weapons are go. Defend. 
inflicted some heavy damage. I guess I didn't need to do that because the knockdown was going to push it down to one. Oh no, that's right, it's not knocked down because it wasn't unsteady at the beginning of that attack. Well, I think I just melee it right back. <laughs> okay, we kicked the other portion of its torso off. So it just took, the pilot just took three damage in quick succession. I was hoping. We could... Try to get a headshot. How much health does this center torso have left? No, we're not going to be able to get a headshot without destroying the center anyway. Let's just finish the thing off so it doesn't get a doesn't get a turn here. We probably don't have to fire both of the weapons, but there's a chance, right, that we fire the laser and it goes into the leg or something. We should we should fire both the weapons. Not guaranteed to get a center torso hit with either of them. I'm really annoyed that they managed to get just enough we damage in to, to do, or just enough of a hit in to do actual structural damage, so I have to sit and do repairs. My time is valuable, man. Okay. Okay, that was way more damage than we needed, and also we triggered a bunch of ammo explosions, and that's just... That was a lot. <laughs> that was way more than was necessary. Alright, so there is a possibility that the mission's not actually right. over. I'm gonna, uh... Move up near the zone, and just not actually enter at this turn so that we burn off some heat. This Jaeger mech really does not have effective cooling. All right, but I'm ready to go. Okay, now I feel comfortable doing it. Uh, yes, Commander. Just in case it matters which mech is carrying it, like in case that mech needs to be sure not to get destroyed, let's let's put it in the Thunderbolt. Coordinates received. Got it. I guess the Jaeger mech wouldn't be a bad call either. Jaeger mech's pretty heavily armored and pretty far away from battle most of the time. Okay, no, that was the actual end of the mission. Weird. That was a weirdly easy mission for a three skull. Well, the bad news is we took a ton of salvage because a ton of salvage was offered and then we ended up not really being able to get anything cool out of it. We definitely take the mech parts and then do I get literally everything? I do actually get everything here. Well, we're never going to need another PPC. Yeah, it's weird that there was such a high salvage offer when there weren't necessarily going to be 22 pieces of salvage in the first place. I, I lost money there taking 417 and there ended up only being 12 pieces of salvage. If we had taken the initial offer of 312, we still would have gotten literally everything. <clears throat> And I mean, I had some control there. I could have killed those mechs in a way that left more mech salvage, but also I don't like that. I don't care about those. Those are not bodies that I need. All right, who is who is That's complaining about fine. needing stuff? Oh, you have ten thousand XP banked, right? Because I had no idea what to do with you. Well, I mean, we have overheat threshold and health. Th those are certainly valuable things. Uh, we could just take a bunch more weapon hit chance on her. We also could go for call the called shot bonuses. Unfortunately, you don't get to take called shots with melee. But she doesn't always melee. Like, maybe, maybe it should be the case that everybody on the team has at least six points of tactics. And then we'll just get her some basic weapon accuracy beyond that. Training confirmed, Commander. Waiting for orders. Uh, Razor definitely does not have enough points to spend. You have 4,800, which is not enough to... I really want to I really want to hit nine tactics with both of them. So that's what we're yes, saving commander. up for there. You... Okay. Saber was the other person. 
So, I mean, with Saber's extremely large cannon, I really also want him to be on nine tactics. I know that I'm kind of Drink. making the same decision on everybody, but it just keeps order. being right. All right, so I'm assuming that we're talking about a one-day repair on the hatchet man there. That's enough. It's enough structural damage that I care. Also, 4,500 sea bills. Harsh. Well, let's take it. I wrapped up that job you asked for, Commander. Okay, let's try this other three skull. Uh, we are going to have to. Uh, we're going to have to take a lot of money on this one. Probably this. Well, we have almost a million in the bank. We could just decide not to make any meaningful repair. No, we can't do that. I need I need to start a ship upgrade. We need to have ship upgrades running while we're sending while we're flying to our next destination. So we need money. What are we talking about in terms of ship upgrades? We now have access to the engine upgrade. It is seven hundred and twenty k. <clears throat> so this job is paying for that. Yeah, I think we got to take it down to one point of priority salvage here. All right. Yeah, we definitely don't want to change anything. I know that last mission was super easy, but there's no reason to assume that this one will also be super easy. So we're running a two and a half symbol squad against these three skulls. These should be a little on the hard side. That last one was... Honestly, that last one feels way too easy to be a three skull. It is It is the total tonnage of the enemies that... At least the total tonnage of the enemies is an important factor in the difficulty. But like... Not to say that the Shrek PPC carrier is not a dangerous enemy, because it is, but I certainly think it's less dangerous than a lot of the other heavy vehicles. I don't know. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take we're gonna take a small reputation hit with the pirates, but we just did some good work for them. I'm sure they'll be fine. I'm really annoyed by the salvage offer on that last job, though. I assumed that a super high salvage off offer meant that there would be a lot of stuff to salvage. If they're giving you a maximum offer of 522, I think there should be a reasonable expectation that there will be 22 pieces of salvage. Alright, we've got some unexpected readings from long-range surveillance, so we might have company. Press the attack, but don't leave yourself exposed. We do have Lock to actually on, everybody. win a fight here. And unfortunately, it is hot. This is going to end up being way harder than the last one, I bet. I'm there. Acknowledged. I do not love running up toward enemies on the high ground. Uh, let's run to cover, just in case. Also, I'm really happy that I, re, uh, I redesigned the order that our mechs are in. Because I really do want the Hatchet Man and the Thunderbolt moving first. It makes things so much easier. Organizationally. All right, that is a 75-ton opponent. Standing by. Now, I'm not terribly stressed about salvage and stuff with these guys because we're only taking one piece of priority. We're not guaranteed we're to get a lot of value. Ain't no sensor lock. I'm just going to let them advance on me a little bit here. 75 tons is a hell of a lot of mech. It's a Black Knight. Oh, they managed to hit one. We they managed to hit with one weapon through six points of evasion. That's impressive. Wow, that is a lot of lasers. Also, uh, quite a lot of armor. Okay, so yeah, this this lance is considerably more dangerous than the last mission. And Darius was talking like there might be backup, like this might not be the whole deal. We might be screwed, dude. <laughs> this this might be uh, this might be really bad. Well, 
I guess let's have at this thing. Do I want Centurion to open up first? I think so. I think we want to remove evasion for the other people. Hold on. Can uh, can the Thunderbolt get a shot at all? Okay, I think this is what we're going to do. We're going to run up. We're going to fire the one, just one missile pod at it. Because we don't have a good shot with, uh, with you anyway. So I'm just going to use this to remove an evasion point. Roger that. Then we can have Centurion go. Or do I actually, like, is Reckless... Because Reckless's weapons are so accurate that it's probably, yeah, it's probably more sensible to go and fire with her now. Because she's going to hit. We're going to keep the jumping around to a minimum, by the way. I, w I, would, I would ordinarily jump here for, co for maybe cover and definitely evasion, but this is not a, uh, this is not a good All biome for that. Committed. The good news is that the um, the heat is going to affect that Black Knight quite a bit with all of his weapons being laser focused. I should figure out where is his particle cannon. Okay, right arm. Not necessarily hugely relevant right at this moment. Let's do this. What does the Jaeger mech have as far as a shot in its best location? Nope. I hey. I clicked too close to the enemy to our other mech and it was like, oh, did you want to select this mech that doesn't even have a turn? Yeah, we'll take this shot next. Firing all weapons. All right, that leg is pretty busted up. Only six armor left. Okay, if we can peel his right torso, he loses a PPC and one of the large lasers. Yes, Commander. I think I'm gonna try to run close to the wall here, just trying to keep the uh, line of sight for these guys bad for a while. It's a 65 and a 60. Yeah, I wish I could have afforded to, to take more points of priority salvage on this one. That other, the other, the artillery guy is down there, because this Black Knight is really cool. I want multiple pieces of this, but there's just there's no way. Engaging target. I saw that shot go high and I got really excited and it hit the wrong torso portion. Waiting for orders. Okay, so she gets to take the shot and then back off around the corner, which I think we're going to want to do because the hatchet man is just not is not prepared for this kind of combat. So do I want to go for a precision strike and try to like knock his leg out or something maybe? We'll put him down to one initiative just off of the strike without even getting the uh the hit necessarily without getting the leg necessarily and i wonder if that's good enough we, we might be able to prevent him from acting at all if we can get one more shot on him or if we can get one more initiative phase on him you know if i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do it with reckless though let's just take this right now we have really managed to spread out all of our damage everywhere okay yeah then you definitely need to back off Affirmative. ace pilot's really good ace pilot on a mech that moves fast anyway so you can reserve until after enemies and do this run in, fire twice, and run away thing is really, really nice. Alright, let's get a point of evasion and also some cover. I do not have Bulwark. It's worth uh, worth remembering. And we're definitely going to go for that leg shot. 34%. We'd have to hit it with two weapons. So it's pro he's probably not going down, but there's a chance. No. I got one. We damaged the PPC, that's good. And we're screwing with his heat sinks, which is also very good. And now we pushed him down to one, so we'll be able to get um, Ricochet and Saber in on him if we want. Okay. Reaching shot with the LRM 10 is not that big a deal. Yes, boss. I think we definitely want to go for this shot first. There's a non-zero chance of the knockdown, and then uh, the Thunderbolt will get a nice, clean, aimed shot, and we can probably take him out of the fight entirely. Is that enough? That is enough stability damage. That hit something good. Uh, you kind of hit everything good. Oh, it's enough stability damage, but he wasn't unsteady at the beginning of the attack. I guess I wasn't really paying attention. 
Well, the good news is his um his combat prowess is definitely lowered. He is he is much less dangerous than he once was. Roger that. I'm just gonna give him the alpha strike here though. Let's let's remove him from combat. I don't know how hard a black knight punches, but given the size of it, my suspicion is harder than I would like to get hit by. Yeah, want to make sure he's actually out of the fight. Enemy We're down. definitely taking a piece of Black Knight salvage as our priority. I don't know what they, what else they could be packing that I would want to grab instead. It would have to be really something special. Now, they do have a sensor lock, so they're going to get to fire. I wonder if that thing down there is also a Jaeger mech. It's the same uh, tonnage. It hard out here, Commander. Come on, people. Let's make it happen. Ricochet, you are going to be fine, you huge baby. All right, let's get some vision. It is, in fact, a Jaeger mech, and they have a quick draw. LRM-10, SRM-4, bunch of medium lasers. So again, a mech that's probably running pretty hot. Is there, a, like, a really tight weapon grouping anywhere? Okay, the right torso has... The right torso has quite a bit of weaponry and also all of the SRM ammo. So taking off the right torso would turn off the SRMs as well. We're looking at 70-70. If I were to precision strike this guy, we're only at a 50% chance to hit. We're not going to get it. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to do a normal attack here. Let's let's preserve the inspired buff for everybody. We are definitely going to have to start taking it a little bit easier on, uh, on heat generation in a second. I am I am going to jump up, I know, but... This is a really good shot, and I have five points of evasion after doing this. I think we'll be okay. Uh, maybe I want to reserve? Well, the thing is, the quick draw is going to move, right? If I go now, I get to shoot at him with no evasion. Okay, so that's a Thunderbolt with some lasers and stuff on it. That's not the scariest thing I've ever seen. Do I precision strike you down to one? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Fire and all weapons. Well, some of that hit the right torso. Evasion, don't fail me now. Oh, after the blackjack. Yeah, actually, that was a pretty good. That's a pretty good move. Well, the blackjack's the blackjack's gonna back off for a turn anyway because we need uh, we need to Order. let some heat go. Yeah, it'll be fine. Okay, I can get an 80% shot with the auto cannon from here. We should probably go for that. And honestly, putting the Thunderbolt out in the open in an uncovered position so that the enemies will go after it probably is uh, beneficial to the survival of the rest of the squad. God, I love that auto cannon. Look at that. Reporting critical hit. He just sheared half of his weapons clean off. Well, a quarter of his weapons clean off. Alright, probably this is going to be a pretty low damage hit. Yeah, it's just too much evasion. That could have been worse. There is a non-zero chance that I'm going to run up and melee this dude. Yes, Commander. Okay, he is unsteady. Heading out. How close am I to overheating here? Can I fire everything? Okay. I would not be able to fire the auto cannon, so I was thinking about doing a multi-shot, auto cannoning that guy just to get evasion off of him. But I think we want to focus up on the quick draw. Knocking on target. I would love it if he just didn't even get a turn. Okay, we made it. That's a kill. 
using a using precision shot to screw with enemy initiative is so valuable. I'm receiving you. All right, I do not have I do not have the move to make this thing happen. So what uh, I'm I'm in his left arc, or I'm his right arc. Cuz I know the difference between right and left. So I could maybe take out the large laser, do some damage to his heat sinks. I'm debating about whether we want to be in the front. Oh. Yeah, we want to shoot kind of center if we can cuz we might be able to provoke an ammo explosion here. Although I'm going to have to take it a little bit easy. We probably don't get to fire both the lasers. This is a little risky. We only have three points of evasion this turn. The Hatchet Man is starting to get a little light relative to enemy munitions. So people with a lot of weaponry out here. Yeah, I'll take this shot. That's fine. Acknowledged. Okay, no center torso damage at all. So how bad is this? It's pretty bad, actually. And if I went for the shot right now, I would only be able to fire, I'm guessing... I don't know. I can fire two weapons still. Hmm. The thing we have to think about here, too, is that if we actually remove this guy from combat, uh, the Jaeger mech won't be able to shoot us. It's my right side that's screwed up. I can't, I can't really turn... I can, I can only turn to present my right side to the Jaeger mech. It'll probably shoot at the hatchet, man. We're, yeah, this is fine. This is fine. So I'm just going to do the same thing. It keeps working. We're just going straight center. Engaging target. Push him down to one initiative and then... Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of armor. We'll push him down to one initiative, hit him with everybody else. Oh, wow. I kind of forgot about the autocannons. Okay, well. That's pretty bad. That's a lot of, uh... That's a lot of damage. All to the most relevant place it could possibly go. God, I wish you had the heat reduction thing. Alright, I'm gonna try to put myself in a position where I am a threat to the Jaeger mech. But I also want to maintain this shot to the front arc. Just make it clear to the Jaeger mech that he is not safe. Alright, so we'll do a we'll do a, a coolant vent next turn. We'll be able to keep up maximum rate of fire for probably the rest of the battle. Do I want to go for the center torso shot? I think I do. It's pretty likely to happen. And if we get there with the autocannon, this guy is in huge trouble. The shot. Oh, that's great. Any center torso shot now can uh, can blow up his ammo. Oh, it happened. Yep, do not put ammunition in your center torso. Boy, oh boy, have I learned that lesson. Good to go. I'm gonna... Can I get in the way here? I'm gonna try to physically block... Him from shooting auto cannons at the at the blackjack that does actually work. Line of sight does matter, uh, so we got to take it easy on the missiles. This thing's only generating four heat, so we can do that. Okay, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of good loot here. I want to move to a position where he cannot see me. And up here, he's still in sensor range. Okay. Sensor lock on target. All right, so his weapons are all screwed up. Uh, probably you are just sprinting this turn. All right. We gotta let some heat bleed off anyway. But now the Hatchet Man is in position to threaten the melee attack if this guy doesn't back up and has so much evasion that it's probably not, yeah, it's probably not in a huge amount of danger. Honestly, this guy is being uh, pretty conservative with his heat. Waiting for orders. Which is annoying to me. I really wish that he was going for it. It's almost like he doesn't want to melt his pilot in the cockpit. On the move. 
Uh, we're definitely venting. And I mean, with this guy being the last target, we may as well precision strike him. Let's just get aye, this aye. over with, right? He has like three center torso health, I think. Ten. Commander. All right. This should be pretty easy. Can I turn on the 10 again? Nope. Oh, I could probably turn on the 10, turn off the 20, turn on the 15. Target locked in. Very unlikely he survives this. Yeah, all right. That wasn't too bad. We did almost lose that very fancy large laser <laughs> due to me being overconfident with the blackjack. So here's a question. Given how easy these turned out to be, could we think about that four skull? <laughs> no, probably not, right? That's, yeah, that's overdoing it. All right, Blackjack needs a little bit of rebuild time. We are certainly taking this Black Knight, although, man, that's a good large laser. Yeah, I mean, we're taking the Black Knight piece, though. What else am I getting? We're one six. Okay, I'm not expecting to get anything else cool here. I don't think they gave us that LRM-15. That's alright. Yeah, a piece of a 75-ton mech is, is good loot, though. It's going to take us a while to build up to the being able to actually use that thing, but I'm excited about the prospect. I wonder if it was outfitted the way it was because it only has energy hardpoints. I think we can see that from the partial torso salvage. I hate to say, I'm not... Not too happy with this world. This turned out this system turned out to be pretty bad for us. Let's uh, pop into the mech bay and have a quick look at that. Uh, Black Knight. Yep, it is entirely energy. Well, it has some support hard points. Oh, you don't get the you don't get the good full tooltips on this. So I'm noticing with the three support hard points and the very high melee rating. This might actually be this might actually be intended as a kind of a punch mech. It only has four jump jets, and while the movement tooltip is not going to be useful to us at all here, uh, the number of jump jets that a mech can mount tells you the number of uh, the number of tiles that it moves by default. So we've got we got two parts of this Orion, one part of a Black Knight. We're we're close. We're close to building some pretty big stuff. With only 1.7 KC bills, I don't know that we're going to buy anything from the black uh, the black market over here. We might just bounce. Like, this is okay. 20, uh, 20 extra stability damage is certainly something. But I think we may just start our, uh, start our ship upgrade and get the, uh, get the blackjack in the repair bay and then start flying somewhere else. Travel time to and from jump points reduced by 30%. Not all of the travel time is that, but still, still I think this is a pretty significant upgrade. So let's have a quick look at the star map, because we are definitely not trying to force skull with our, with our lance at two and a half symbols. Pay is good on this job. There's a minor directorate base in this region, and we'd like to remind them that the local pirate organization is aware of their base, and they should not become complacent. Destroying a handful of the facility structures should send the proper message. The base is likely to be guarded. So this is against the Oregon Directorate. That's who that symbol is. Okay. I kind of assumed that this was happening like post the events of the campaign mode, and so the Arano Restoration would be totally in control here. But I guess the uh, the Espinosas are still around. This is a great like I want to do this mission real bad, but there's no way. So we're being offered travel to Panzer. Is Panzer a good place to go? Because I'll take free travel. Panzer a reasonable... Well, it was in our travel path, wasn't it? Because we came, we came from Sacramonte. No, it was not in our travel path. We actually have not been here yet. But it's a half-skull world. I'm not doing a half-skull world. We could bounce up to, like, bring them... Two and a half-skull worlds are okay. I would like three skull worlds, ideally. Our difficulty, uh, our desire for difficulty has increased pretty sharply. 
Uh, we got to be careful about going to worlds actually in uh, in the Capelling Confederation because we will not be able to take a bunch of the jobs here. But black market inner sphere level civilization. It's a research world. Sometimes have rare high tech components for sale. Twenty day travel, huh? The thing is, I'm kind of thinking we want to keep moving in the direction of this, right? There's only 35 days left on this. We could just go for it. We did a couple of three skulls, and those worked out fine. It's only 24 days away. What's the what's the rest of the deal with this world? Really, this world is generally a one skull world. As inner sphere level civilization, like this is, hmm. Well, I don't love that part where it's a one skull world. Uh, it is 35 days. No, we should try to we should try to do something else that's on the way. Rollis is probably a little too challenging. Honestly, maybe it's Larsha. It may well be Larsha. We won't be able to take any of the jobs being offered by the Capellans, but we'll be able to take the jobs that are against the Capellans, uh, which is probably going to give us some pirate rap. This will give us a chance to interact with the Concordat and the Federated Sons. Yeah, yeah, maybe. And obviously I'm preferring black market worlds. Um, 60,000 travel cost of 20 days. Yeah, okay. I think that's the, that's the general direction of our movement. So let's get that repair in the bay here. I don't think we want to make any, like, changes. I think the, the design of this mech is fine. I miss the autocannons, but that large laser is really good. Boy, that's hardly even... I hardly even have to do anything here. So if we're going to put the drives into the queue here, we do have the money to make still make pay. We're burning time really quickly. We're below a thousand days left already. It was a lot of travel. We have crossed the whole map, though, at this point. It's not a big deal, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, let's move, and then once we arrive, we'll uh, we'll end the episode there on Larsha. My concern here with this being a three skull world is that now nah, we'll be able to do the jobs. I was like, if we can't do any jobs here, we're gonna be like all the way out of money. But I'm sure we'll be fine. It is possible that we will not be able to afford any fun uh, stuff from the store if the jobs are not good, if we're not able to do much work. Also, it feels real weird not to have more mech stuff to do, but we blazed through that planet quite easily. I will say that second job is a little bit more what I was expecting from a three skull. I felt like that first job was really easy, like almost insultingly. Sometimes I wonder if Darius is good at his job at all. Maybe we'll get a chance to uh, replace him with somebody who's a little bit better at estimating mission difficulty. Or maybe we could just, like, tech him out, you know? Go full cyberpunk on him. Replace part of his, his cortex with a difficulty estimating computer. You end up looking like Kano from Mortal Kombat. Another thing I like about this is that we're, like, we're definitely getting pretty deep into uh, pretty deep into new space, so we're going to have seen a lot of worlds pretty soon. Uh, do I want to risk this? The thing is, if we take the extravagant pay one more time, we probably won't ever have to do it again. I really want to get us up to, yeah, I really want to get us up to 41 morale. I think it's important. We will make it work. After we hit Larsha, we're going to have like 24 days left. Oh, a distress call. We should we should respond to the distress call. I am a big fan of this. Okay. We managed to scoop up the survivors just before the transport explodes and increases morale by one. This is the same event we saw earlier, which is why I'm not reading the text. Uh, it increased our morale by one, which puts us at 41, which puts us in the high tier. We get 35 resolve points per round. That's pretty great, and now we can uh, now we can scale back the uh, the pay in future months. Yeah, one more one more big payment to make here. 
We're almost completely out of cash. We've arrived at our destination, Commander. Now, it is worth noting, from a score perspective, and I forgot to check score on star systems visited, but yeah, it's obvious now that passing through star systems counts them as visited for this. That's important to know. My current rank is green. You work the periphery as a mercenary for hire. Well, <laughs> that is literally true. So we don't have access to the normal store. Huh. Do I really not have access to the black market in... I assumed, with the black market being run by uh, pirates, that I would have access to the black market here. Because why would the... Why would me not being liked by the Capellans mean I can't access the illegal store run by criminals who hate Capellans? That's a strange thing. Alright, what do we got? Show me something good. Apparently we don't need to worry about buying stuff. There is a single job here. It is three and a half skulls and we have to take it. I really thought that there would be more work here. Well, alright. We have to take it, so we have to take it. We have to take it and we have to succeed or we're going to lose the game. <laughs> so, good luck us. I mean, we have some money. We have some time, right? We have 24 days. We can probably get somewhere in 24 days, right? Oof, not a lot of places. It's 28, 23 to Brisbane. It's not ideal, but like if, if we try this job and it doesn't work... We can bail out to Brisbane or, or something. Um, moving to another place in Capellan space is pretty non-ideal. We can move to non-diz. Three and a half skulls, it will have work for us. Yeah, okay, so we're not like in totally dire straits. We will give this mission a try next time. Uh, and hopefully it will be okay. So that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Come back next time to see if we can manage to pull this off by the skin of our teeth, and we'll see you then.